Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I've got a tricky question for you today. This is a projectiles question that has come from an OCR paper. A student sent it in to me, which I was very grateful for because I am finding it difficult to find uh, so many tricky questions because I've done so many. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So, projectiles question. Um, so, the first thing I'd want to do for a projectiles question is, is just draw a little sketch. Um, and it says that P is going to be um, projected at a, a speed of 14. Um, and to the horizontal, that angle will be 60. Uh, it also says that P is on top of a uh, cliff. So let's just draw a cliff, left, cliff face like that. Uh, and the cliff is uh, 40 meters. Um, and then Q is being projected from the, hor uh, from the, the bottom of the cliff face. Uh, so that is being projected at a speed of 25 and an angle of alpha. Okay, um, and what I might do as well is I will put on the uh, components of the velocity. So the horizontal component here is 14 cos of 60. Um, and the uh, horizontal component here is 25 cos of alpha. And then the um, <clears throat> Uh, the vertical component will be uh, 14 sine of 60 and for this one it will be 25 sine of alpha. Okay, so there's the diagram. Um, all the information I've put on there and it's saying that they will collide. Okay, so let's imagine um, what's going to happen when they collide. Um, well, let's say they collide there for argument's sake. Um, and let's say this one comes down like this, and then this one perhaps goes up like this, something like that. Um, you know, just, just a sketch. Don't get too upset if it's not particularly accurate. But the point is, <laughs> they're going to meet here. And if we look at the horizontal, uh, the clue is as well, they've said cos alpha. So that gives us a clue that we should be looking at the horizontal here. Um, then they've travelled the exact same distance horizontally. And because they meet here at a particular moment in time, they've also taken the exact amount of same time to get there. Now, the velocity in the horizontal doesn't change because the acceleration in our projectiles questions is zero in the horizontal because we don't assume that there's any air resistance. So the speeds don't change and they take the same amount of time to get the same amount of distance. So that means that their speeds must be the same. So in order to solve this question, we just need to equate the two horizontal speeds. So we get 14 cos 60 will equal 25 um, cos alpha. Uh, 14 cos 60 is just seven, and that equals 25 cos alpha. Um, divide through, we get 20, We get 7 over 25 is equal to cos alpha, um, and that's perfect. Okay, and box that up. Great, and that's all because the horizontal velocities uh, stay constant, and they must be the same in order for them to meet. <clears throat> okay, uh, now it says determine whether Q is rising or falling immediately before the collision. Well, that another clue in the question there, rising or falling, means that I'm going to be looking at the horizontal, sorry, the vertical. Um, so for SUVAT questions, what I like to do is I like to just write S-U-V-A-T um, for each object in the horizontal and vertical normally, but because we're only looking at the vertical, let's just focus only on the vertical um, and fill in as much information as I know. So for P, we do know that the um, vertical initial um, velocity is 14 sine 60, um, which is the same as 7 uh, root 3, because sine 60 is root 3 over 2. And we know the acceleration is minus 10 in the vertical, because we're going to have to take G as, um, as 10, and also I probably should have said this, but I'm going to call this the positive direction as you would kind of do for most projectile questions. 
So up is positive, and that's why uh, you know this initial velocity is is positive, so it's going upwards, uh, which means the acceleration is negative because gravity is acting downwards. Okay, um, and we're going to investigate the, the only really interesting point in space and time here, which is uh, this one, uh, where they meet, where they collide. Uh, so we know that that's going to be capital T in terms of time that it takes to get there. Um, and that's great because what we can do for Q is exactly the same thing, and then we have something which links the two um, the two equations, and that is that they uh, meet at the same time. Uh, so we're going to investigate the same point in time. Okay, and we know the initial velocity for Q, um, which I should have labelled there, is 25 sine alpha. Okay, so let's just do a quick um, triangle to work out sine alpha, because uh, we know that cos alpha, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, is this. Uh, we can then do Pythagoras' theorem, and that will tell us that um, this is 24. So sine alpha is uh, 24, it's the opposite, 24 over the hypotenuse, 25. So this is 25 sine alpha, uh, and sine alpha is 24 over 25. So this is just simply 24. Okay. Okay. And again, the acceleration in the vertical is always going to be uh, minus 10 in this case. So now what we can do is we can call the displacement uh, for P, SP, and the displacement for Q, SQ. And now what we need is a way of kind of linking these two equations, and that is the fact that they meet here. So let's think about what their displacements must equal if they are going to meet? Well, um, basically Q needs to move 40 meters um, upwards um, relative to P in order for them to meet. So we could say that um, S Q needs to be SP plus 40 for them to meet. And let's just do a double check to see if this works. So if, let's say SQ moves up 30, then what would need to happen for P? Well, it would need to come down 10 to meet. And that equation works. That's, that's good. If Q moves up 30 and P comes down 10, then they're going to meet and <clears throat> Um, and that equation holds true. So it's always good just to do a little example just to make sure that you've got it the right way round because it's easy to make that mistake. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got this equation and we know that the t's are the same as well so we should be good to go. Uh, and then if we use our good old trusty s equals ut plus a half at squared um, because the final velocity is, is not particularly important right now. Um, then we could do this equation for both. So for, for Q, the displacement will be U times T. And then a half of A would be minus 5. So minus 5 T squared. And that SQ needs to equal SP, which will be... 7 root 3 t minus 5 t squared and then we need to plus 40 as well okay um, so just to this one is uh, sq uh, using this this formula here and this one here is sp again using your uh, S equals ut plus half ad squared, and then you need to add 40 so that it fits with this condition on their displacements. Okay, um, we can cancel minus 5t squared from both sides. Um, we can bring over the uh, 7 root 3t. Uh, we can factorize uh, to get 24 minus 7 root 3. 
and then we can divide through by 24 minus 7 root 3 and we get an answer of uh, 3.368 okay great so that's the time that they meet <clears throat> and now what we need to do is we need to figure out whether it's rising or it's falling okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to um, we're going to substitute back in to find the velocity of Q so it's asking for Q whether that's rising or falling this was our suvat for Q uh, we need to find the velocity now um, and we have the time so we don't really care about the distance displacement this time now because uh, we have the uh, the time the time is three point uh, three six eight <clears throat> so we can use good old-fashioned v is equal to u plus a t okay and then so v is equal to u is 24 um, and then we're plus minus 10 multiplied by 3.368 um, and that will equal minus 0.68 meters per second and thus it is falling as that is going down we know the positive direction is up so getting a negative velocity means it's moving down right hope you enjoyed that uh, check out my live revision sessions for edxl link in the description and also if you do have any tricky questions send them through to me just let me know where the question came from and um, hopefully i'll have time to do it and be really helpful bye for now